Hey everybody, welcome to the lesson here at THSS Technology. It's been a while since we've had an update, but we thought we'd do one more for the school year and we're gonna end it off using some good dough. Uh, our goal for today is uh, creating a tile map for our game, bringing in a tile set, building a very basic world. We're gonna be making a maze game, as you know, and then we're gonna create a player. Uh, we're gonna do the scripting for that player for some top-down movement and then bring them into our maze. So it'll be a bit of a longer lesson today, so let's get started. So I have an empty scene right here, so I'm gonna create a new 2D scene, and I'm gonna hit F2, and I'm gonna rename this to Main. Then I'm gonna press Control A, and we're gonna bring up our tile map. Let's double click on that here. Excellent. So now we're gonna go over the right to the inspector here, and the tile set is currently empty. We're gonna click on that, and we're gonna go New Tile Set. Then down here at the bottom in this window here, we're gonna to go to the tile set window and we're gonna take our tiles and we're gonna drag them into our tile set and we're gonna click yes onto that window. Uh, and as you can see, we currently have this set up to a 16 by 16 tile set. You can also see it here when you click here, 16 by 16. But if your tile set's a different size, like 32 by 32, you can change it up here in the right in the inspector and then down here in the setup of the actual tile set. So now that we have that tile set all created, let's go to the tile map section. So we have a pencil tool uh, for drawing singular tiles, line for drawing lines, box for drawing boxes, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's just zoom in a bit here, and then let's zoom in for a bit here. Let's just create a very basic map. So I'm gonna go to my box here, and I'm gonna kind of draw this out here, and you know maybe I'll have a path going down here, and then another path kind of going down there. Uh, that looks pretty good for now. Actually, we'll make this a, a room down here at the bottom. Excellent. So that's looking all right. And then we're going to take our wall tiles and we're going to go wall tiles all around there, down here, here, and here. Right. And then we're going to take that wall tile there to go along the bottom. And then let's get a wall tile to go along the side here. Take a corner tile to go there, that corner tile to go there, that corner tile there, that corner tile there. They're going up like that. That looks good. Go up over there. And then we can just keep adding tiles as needed. Looking good. And you can spend as much or as little time as you want on this tile set. We're just going to make a really quick little map right here now. Uh, and then we need some inside corners for here. That should, no, that's not the one I want. No, that's not the one I want either. Nope, let's go back here. And I can't seem to find my inside corner. So, you know what? We're actually not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to keep going with the lesson. Although I can't finish that one there. Perfect. Okay, so we got a very basic uh, little map here. I'm gonna have to clean up these inside corners here to get the actual proper corners working, uh, but that is a lower priority right now for us. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so now that we have a basic tile set laid out, let's get started on our player. Okay, so for that, we're actually gonna create a new uh, node here, a new scene. Uh, but first, let's just save this scene here. Let's just call this main, click save. It's gonna run the game. It's always good to run your game, just get everything saved and everything there is looking all right. So I'm gonna click on a new scene up here and I'm gonna make this a other node. And for this one, we're gonna do a character body 2D. Okay, now we're gonna get a warning saying we're missing some parts. So first let's add a sprite 2D and then our texture is currently empty and I'm just gonna actually use the Godot icon here for our sprite. You'd want to replace this with your sprite or whatever you're using for your game, of course. We still have an error because it is saying we do not have a uh, collider on that. So let's take this now. Let's add a collision shape 2D. Now we have an error because we have not outlined the shapes. So we're going to create a shape here. Let's create a new rectangle shape and let's kind of drag that over. Perfect. Okay, so we got the start of our uh, of our player here. So let's go back to our parent, the character body 2D. I'm just gonna rename that with F2 and call it player. Let's hit Control S to save that. I'm gonna call this a player scene. And now our scene is player. We have our main level up here. So we got both of our scenes kind of ready to go. Uh, if you notice that your, your tiles or your characters are looking a little uh, blurry, if we go to project, project settings, and then go down to textures, 
Uh, you want to make sure that uh, your texture filter is set to nearest. By default, it usually goes to linear. Okay, we want it set to nearest and that'll stop the blockiness. It's not going to be smoothing out of any of the edges from your pixel art. Okay, so we're going to create a script here on our players. So we're going to right click and we're going to attach script. You can also click the attach script button right there if you like. Now it's gonna to try to help us out. It's gonna give us a built-in script that inherits from the character body, which is our basic movement script, which is really good if you're making a 2D platformer. But because we're doing a top-down game and we wanna do a little bit of coding, we're gonna switch this just to node default. And we're gonna call it player, and we're gonna click create. And let's zoom in a little bit here for everybody. Perfect. Well, we're not actually gonna need the ready function, but I'll just leave it in play. Uh, but everything we're gonna be putting is going to be uh, inside of the uh, process function. Uh, so let's get started on that. And I'm going to start off by doing a couple of variables. So just remember a variable is just a, uh, a container for your game that can store different information. Kind of think of it like a box. Um, and I'm going to start by typing export. What export does, it allows us to see the variables from the inspector in Godot. I'll show you what that means in a little bit. But we're going to be creating two vari variables here. We're going to call one called player speed. Okay. And we're going to make that a float with a value of I don't know, let's do uh, 50. And then let's make a, another, make sure it's export variable, and we're gonna call this player acceleration. And we're also gonna make that a float, and let's make that also equal to 50. And we'll be able to change those functions around a little bit later. And uh, so now let's go into our process function. We're gonna make another variable that's gonna be inside the process, and I'm just gonna call this, like a direction or something along those lines. And direction is gonna be a vector two. So remember, a vector two is a system that uses the x, y coordinates, a left and a right, and an up and a down, okay? And we're gonna assign this variable that we're calling direction as a vector two, and we're gonna make that vector two equal to input, so any input that you're doing into your keyboard or mouse or joystick. And then we're gonna do something called get underscore vector. And when you do a get vector, it needs Four, uh, uh, four pieces of arguments, four arguments in that. Uh, and the arguments I'm gonna use are uh, left, right, and then up and down. Okay, so now we are putting in four different vectors there. Now, what is left, right, up, and down? Well, let's have a look here. So we're gonna to go to project, project settings, and we're gonna to go to our input map. There's nothing in our input map right now, but we are calling on our input. So we need to put some into that input map. So I'm gonna add new action, and I'm gonna add an action for left, okay? And we're gonna add that action, and then we're gonna add one for right, and this is the exact same spelling with punctuation, uh, the same as we did in our code here, okay? And then for my left, I'm going to add a button and I'm gonna hit my A button on my keyboard. So now when I press the A button on my keyboard, the, uh, the computer, Godot, knows that I'm meaning left. And let's do this for right. Let's do D for right, W for up, and then S for down. Perfect, so now our input map is all set up there. Um, and if you wanted to have maybe use the arrow keys or joystick button, you can add a second function. So for left, I can hit left on my arrow keys. And now it's also gonna uh, use my left button. So you can do that for joysticks or anything else you're using uh, as input, okay? Now we're gonna get close. So now our game knows what left, right, up, and down are. Fantastic. All right, so whenever we're moving a player and when we're using this character controller component here, uh, this node, um, that is using our the Godot's physics system, okay? So because of that, we can use the command velocity. And we're gonna say velocity.x or velocity on the x-axis, and then we're gonna use a command called move toward, all right? Mm -hmm. So when we're doing move toward, it's the where you're moving from to where you're moving to, okay? So my moving from is my, veloc my current velocity on the x, okay? And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take that then I'm gonna take my player speed variable that I made, and we're gonna multiply that by our direction on the X, which is the left or the right on the X is what it would be, okay? And then we're going to do it, and then for the acceleration, that'll be the acceleration we move at, okay? So that's how we 
um, move on the x-axis, then we do pretty much the exact same thing on the y-axis, right? Move towards, and then we got a velocity dot y, move by the player speed, multiply that by our direction on the y, and then our player acceleration. Perfect. And the last thing we need to do, this is just a Godot thing. This will allow us to move in the world and interact with objects that have colliders. Uh, we need to add a command called move and slide. Okay? And that's pretty much it. Everything there should work. Now I'm going to hit Control S to save my code. And then let's go back to 2D. And let's actually play our game and see if it works. So we go to the right, we can go down, we can go left and up. Now that is going very slow, of course, okay? Oh, my GeForce is telling me to use the overlay. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna ignore that. And then I'm gonna go over here to my inspector. So now we can see our speed and our acceleration. So let's double our speed, let's double our acceleration. And let's try that now here. That's a little bit better. Still a little bit slow. The acceleration was actually pretty good. So let's go back and let's uh, do one more change. We'll click on our player here. My GeForce experience is being annoying. And let's put our speed up to 200. Let's see if that's too fast. So good acceleration, but that's actually pretty good movement there. I am pretty happy with that. Liking everything about that. Excellent. Okay, so we got our player all set up. Now we're gonna go back to our main scene here, okay? Um, and what I wanna do now is bring my player, which is over here, Control S to save that. And I want to bring it into my main scene. We do that with the link command, this little chain that we have up here, okay? Uh, also known as instantiating a child scene. So I'm going to instantiate that. I'm going to click on my player. And, oh, that's a little bit too big. So we need to adjust our sizing now. So with the player selected over here, we're going to go to transform. And let's put that scale down to maybe 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Perfect. And let's take our player now. Let's move it into our world. And now we can hit play. All right, so now our players can move around our seat. Now he's a bit too fast, actually, now for this smaller game. So we're going to want to make him smaller. But we have a problem. Uh, our player is not uh, listening to where our walls are. So we need to make some adjustments there. Okay, so let's X out of that. Now let's go to our tile map, okay? And we're wanting our player to interact with the walls and with the tiles, and every tile should have a different type of interaction. And we're gonna do that with our physics system. So we wanna make sure we have our tile set clicked on here, and we're gonna go to physics layers, and we're gonna add an element. And we'll just add a coll collision layer and a collision mask on level one. And then down here in our tile set window here, we're gonna go to paint, and then we're gonna say, I wanna paint my physics layer. Then all you have to do is paint the tiles that are walls. Excellent, those are walls as well. And anything else that you want as walls in your game that you don't want your player hitting, probably those as well. Perfect, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go back to our main scene here and let's try one more time. Excellent, our player cannot leave our walls now. Great, that's a, that's a pretty excellent game. I'm very happy with that, 10 out of 10. And I mean, the last things you can go to your player and you can add a camera 2D now, right? So now you have a camera on your player. So now if we hit play, the camera will follow our player. And if we wanna zoom in that camera a little bit, we could put the zoom, uh, I don't know, maybe a two. Let's hit it play now and see if that looks a little bit better. Well, that's a better playable area for our game. Perfect. Well, I'm going to clean up this tile set a little bit because I'm not very happy with it. Uh, but we now have a working bare bones game. So hope you found that useful and I will see you all later.